everyone probably knows the, uh, or well, not everyone, um, but for those who don't know, uh, I am Dan Blanton in the English department, uh, the uh, current um, director uh, of the program, program in critical theory. And um, <clears throat> for, uh, for those of you who are, who are, not, are not yet established regulars um, at this occasion, every year uh, early in the spring, um, we get together just to, uh, just to have a, a sort of conversation um, about what the program is or what the program potentially is, um, especially for those uh, who, are, who are interested in joining us. Um, but also for those who, um, who have, uh, are currently within the program or who have begun to, um, to uh, test and develop and discover and find uh, some of its, uh, some of its uh, resources along the way. Um, so the ideal is, is not perhaps that uh, we manage to say everything we'd like to say uh, this evening, but rather, rather that this can become one part um, of, a sort of, uh, of a sort of conversation for those wanting to think about what they can do within and, uh, and with um, critical theory and the program in critical theory uh, in particular. Um, so for those who you know, want, have questions or things they'd like to talk about this evening, uh, that's wonderful when we talk about all of them, but you should also uh, feel free uh, to drop me a note or Rob a note or anyone else uh, here a note um, as you might be thinking about how and whether uh, you wish to incorporate uh, the program into, into your thinking and work and research uh, over, over the next uh, few years. Um, but first of all, just welcome uh, to everyone. Um, as I mentioned, for those who are just arriving, uh, we are recording this, uh, but we also, so if you don't wish to be, uh, wish to be visible, please, please feel free. But having said that, uh, with the promise that we will edit this bit out, um, I would like for everyone to be able to get a sense of, uh, of who's here. Um, I'm not sure how best to corral this uh, online, but, um, but uh, maybe we'll just, maybe I, I'm not sure if everyone sees the same order of tiles uh, as I do. So, so I probably need to point at people <laughs> or, or, uh, or gesture uh, gesture in their direction, invite them. Just tell us uh, who you are and, and where you are uh, and uh, so that we'll get a sense, uh, a sense of one another. The first person um, I, should, I should introduce, uh, Rob just mentioned, um, is of course the most important one. Uh, and uh, that, is, that is Patty. Uh, for those who don't know Patty, everyone should know Patty. Uh, so, Patty, maybe you could start us off and just uh, just wave and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Patty, <laughs> Patty Dunlap, and I'm the program coordinator um, for Critical Theory. And I'm really happy that all of you um, are here tonight to join us and learn a little bit more about the program. Those who are in the program will know that Patty is is kind of the uh, the nerve center um, of of everything we do. She is the in CIR, uh, our sort of graduate student um, lieutenant uh, for uh, for everything, the person who coordinates and knows. Uh, so so obviously the person who it is is most crucial um, to uh, to be aware of at all times. I think Kai is also here. If you want to say hi, Kai. Am I next, Dan? Yes. yes. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Kai Nguyen. I am the Associate Director of the Consortium for Interdisciplinary Research. And so we're the administrative center for the critical theory program and for the Berkeley Center for the Study of Religion. Uh, and I have been working with Dan and Patty and Rob for a number of years uh, to support this really, really wonderful program. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting uh, new students in the DE program. Um, and I once also was a PhD student at UC Berkeley in the performance studies program uh, a while back. <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, Rob, yours is the next base in my, in my window here. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Rob Kaufman. I'm in the comparative literature department. 
I'm currently the graduate uh, advisor for the critical theory program, and I'm a past co-director of the program. Um, and I really just wanna welcome everybody. I wanna echo something Dan said a couple moments ago, that if at any point after today's open house, you wind up having questions that you'd like to pursue further or just to talk about the program, your interest in it, your idea, please don't hesitate to email me or Dan or Patty. There are other of our colleagues here. I see Colleen Lai and Leslie Salinger and Karen Feldman and Tony Kays among others. Um, we're happy to take your questions. That's what we're here for. And really don't hesitate, just email us and we can set up a Zoom meeting with you or whatever might be best. Um, there's lots to say about the program, but I think it'll emerge in conversation. And um, I'm lucky to know a number of you already, and I'm looking forward to getting to meet those of you who are just coming for the first time. Uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, next, I see Tony. I'm thinking about Benjamin, but I'm still thinking about Benjamin. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> so I'm Tony Case. I'm, I have a joint appointment between <clears throat> the German department and uh, film and media. And uh, I've been uh, teaching a few times now a course, uh, a seminar on uh, uh, basically Frankfurt School and critical media theory, where we do Krakow and Benjamin and uh, and, and uh, Adorno, of course. <laughs> and uh, just last semester, I thought it was one of my best seminars ever, like 18 people, really wonderful. Uh, most, the smartest people I've met in, uh, in my lifetime, I would say, you know, all around the table, it was really amazing. So uh, uh, it, it's, um, it's a great pleasure to, to be associated with, with this program for many, many years. And I wanna welcome uh, all the new ones and uh, of course, good to see the ones I, I already know. So uh, it's, uh, so I'm, as I say, I'm teaching uh, mostly the, the 205, which is a required seminar, like, you know, uh, Krakow, Benjamin and Atwana and media. And I'm also doing electives, uh, including things like theory of photography, uh, yeah, with a lot of uh, uh, critical theory emphasis and also one on uh, crisis of cinema like late Weimar, you know, transition to, to fascism. And for next year, I was planning to tackle something that uh, I wanted to do for many years, but I didn't dare to do it. And this is uh, uh, to do only one book and that would be the, um, the Arcades Project by, by, by uh, Benjamin, which is something like 900 pages. Uh, and I couldn't do it because I was thinking I have to do it kind of in, in, in you know, page by page, but that's of course nonsense. So, so what we are doing is basically to tease out the theory of, of, of modernism. And uh, basically when you look at it, it's, this book is about theory of everything, <laughs> you know, you, you name it and there's a theory there that you can find in the case project. So, so we will be, we, we, doing it quite uh, conceptually. And, and so I'm looking forward to that, maybe next year or so, maybe the year after. It's, it's a matter of planning, of course. Maybe you but, could just uh, do convolute in. Huh? Maybe you could just do convolute in. Yeah, <laughs> convolute in, yeah, that's, I was thinking of starting with that, of course. Uh, anyway, so that's me. <laughs> oh. that's all of me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, some, well, as I, as I said before, though now individually and with an introduction, um, welcome everyone. Um, probably gotten a sense just from the, uh, just from the array um, of, <clears throat> of colleagues, uh, both graduate and faculty, uh, something of the structure and the character uh, of the critical theory program. But there are a few, a few <clears throat> details, both substantive and technical, um, that are probably worth filling in a little bit about the idea behind the program, um, but also the idea that the program has has come to uh, come to uh, practice. I guess uh, is the best way to put it. I th I can never remember the exact dates, but I think I think the inception uh, for those newly arrived of the critical theory program goes back about um, fifteen years or something something closing in on 15 years. Um, 
arising partially as, as the formalization of something that had, uh, had been there more informally uh, for some time, which was a set of inter and transdisciplinary conversations and curiosities um, that were already enriching uh, thinking and research in a variety of departments and doctoral programs in particular, um, but didn't really have um, at the time any bureaucratic manifestation, had no administrative shape. Uh, and so as, as kind of an act of experiment and will, um, a number of, of our colleagues of them here um, got together and, and joined the reading and thinking and, and decided uh, that, that we could use uh, such, a, such a space um, in, a more, in a more visible form. Um, and after, after some, some mutual reading and discussion uh, and a little bit of, a, a little bit of, a, of bureaucratic research, um, what we came up with is at its core what is called a, a designated emphasis. Um, I think you probably all have a, have a, sense, of, have a sense of this. Um, but a designated emphasis seemed really to, to offer two things. Um, first of all, <clears throat> A sort of a sort of space that that could be both intellectually charged and and in a different way uh, neutral among the various disciplines that it touched uh, in such a way to uh, to really to really create the circuit um, in which the uh, the work going on uh, in other departments could find both a fuller expression and in a lot of ways a sharper a sharper edge. Um, over the last couple of weeks, if I can digress just a moment, uh, Tony's been reading Benjamin, and I, for some reason, have been going back to, to Horkheimer's early essays, from which the locution of critical theory largely, largely derives. And Horkheimer, of course, in an essay that most of you no doubt know, um, draws this distinction between traditional and critical theory. Traditional theory he associates with the kind of modes of more or less settled understanding um, that we tend to recognize in form disciplines and departments and doctoral programs. Um, and he distinguishes this from critical theory, which is, which is defined by a kind of possibility of greater agency achieved critically and sometimes, sometimes uh, politically, a sort of, a sort of knowledge um, put to work, uh, as it were. Um, but also devoted to understanding the sort of suppositions beneath uh, those modes of traditional theory and also to integrating the resources um, of all of the traditional theories that are available to hand. Um, and in reading, reading back through these essays, it has struck me that in a way, inadvertently, we have kind of created uh, the perfect formal laboratory for, uh, for what, uh, what Horkheimer was sketching out here. Insofar as we have in our, in, our separate, in our separate trainings and the work we do in rhetoric or in anthropology or, or in, uh, in law or in economics, um, a kind of traditional base, uh, but in the designated emphasis, ideally, and I think we all attempt to, uh, to, um, to maintain and expand this, uh, we have also a more experimental uh, space. The designated emphasis, of course, for those of you who haven't caught up on all the Berkeley euphemisms, um, refers to the designation that comes on a final diploma. Uh, one receives a PhD in philosophy with a designated emphasis in critical theory. Um, but in the shape of the critical theory program, we kind of double down on that. And we might almost think of the logic of the DE as a space in which you can do a PhD in traditional theory with a designated emphasis in a critical one. Um, and that very much forms the kind of animating spirit uh, of the entire program. Um, last week, Patty was, was putting together some of the information uh, on the program and we looked back at the numbers uh, over the last, uh, last decade or so um, when the first students who had come through the whole program uh, started filing and completing their degrees and going off uh, going off into the wide world. Um, and we discovered that to this point, uh, students from something like 25 different programs on the campus 
um, have taken the DE in critical theory. Uh, and the current, the representation of current departments is even broader. Um, now about 30, uh, with faculty coming from almost, almost as many um, directions. So you can probably get a sense already and in what various people have said um, of, of the space that you have entered or are considering entering. Um, it is a kind of alternative intellectual space for a lot of us, uh, a place not so much to escape from as to step out to step out of and reflect on uh, the work we do um, as the sort of as the sort of core uh, of our more disciplinized um, research. So at its core, we're a designated emphasis. We're a graduate program with a different shape, uh, critical rather than traditional, um, in that sense that I mentioned. As several people have have, uh, have mentioned <clears throat> or pointed to, uh, that fundamental core of the designated emphasis. Um, as a created around it too, um, a, a sort of more generalized program. Uh, back when we had a world outside of our uh, computer boxes, um, critical theory as a lively presence on campus with events coming from all directions, events coordinated uh, with any number of other programs. Um, and a sort of space where conversations happen not only within uh, the seminars uh, that form the sort of formal curriculum, uh, but also more generally in a kind of, in a kind of avocational way um, as conversations build and continue uh, across, across the many events uh, that, that are ours. Um, and since then, the sort of initial, the initial wager or experiment has expanded. A lot of you may know too um, about the International Consortium of Critical Theory Programs, which we've now built atop of the Critical Theory Program, um, which has begun to try to integrate some of those more exploratory modes uh, that we've developed within the program in a broader and indeed a global framework. Um, the ICCTP, uh, has been doing even during the pandemic um, a wide array, a wide array uh, of events gathering people from from many continents um, has focused especially on critical work emerging from the global south uh, in the form of a new journal critical times uh, in a monograph series critical south dedicated to bringing some of that work from the global south in particular um, back into back into a nearer uh, academic, academic range. So I, I will let others um, describe the sort of, sort of experiences and feel um, of the program. I'll just add to what a couple of, uh, of my colleagues uh, said about the experience of teaching in it. Um, one of the grand things uh, about the sort of space that I think we created uh, is the fact that it allows within any given reading group, within any group, given course, or within any, any seminar, um, a space in which the strengths of everything that everyone here does and knows separately can be brought into a kind of direct conjunction. That is to say, one is reading material in common, but one of the true excitements uh, of the program is that that reading is being taken, being undertaken, um, through the multiple tools uh, and instruments, just as just as Horkheimer uh, kind of kind of desired, I think, of all the disciplines that have been mentioned, uh, of all the sort of the sort of work uh, that everyone everyone here um, has done, um, we can we can take uh, any any questions or points of curiosity about how this works uh, in practice. Um, but I did want to uh, give the chance of a couple of a couple of uh, our colleagues from whom we've heard already to say more um, about their work uh, in the program. Um, Donna and, and Josh uh, have, as they said, been, been in the program for a while uh, and have been testing uh, some, of, some, of its, uh, some of its tools and, uh, and having, having watched what one of the great joys of this gig is you get to see what everyone is doing. Um, and so I can think of nothing, no better way to kind of instance what the program does uh, than by getting a sense of, of what it's been doing. 
Um, Donna, did you want to do you want to come back and elaborate on what you gave us a few moments ago? Sure. Yeah. Um, I guess yeah. As I try to consolidate some of um, the most valuable tools that I've acquired from the program and the classes is um, just the kinds of like the critical modes of reading and discernment that I've um, that I think an engagement with critical theory texts um, sort of generally has given me. I mean, um, we in Judith Butler taught a seminar once on the critique of violence in which we read the same text for nine weeks. And so it was really a kind of um, slow meditative lesson on all of the, the kernels of thought that that one essay um, has. And by the eighth week, it really became like, <laughs> Okay, okay. But you know, the fact that you can kind of live with a text um, paragraph by paragraph, week after week was really, um, really kind of, I mean, it was an important tool that I, I brought to um, pretty much everything I, I encounter. And I think that there's um, something about that kind of um, reading that, um, that is, yeah, that that we that we do in critical theory courses um, that is at once a kind of um, ethical kind of there there's something that is both um, concrete and material, but also um, emphasizes the the aesthetic and the formal and um, I mean there's yeah I guess um, just such a range of of um of lessons from the material but also just being in the classes um that i've taken and encountering different students um in those classes and how they encounter the material in, in different ways whether from um, anthropology or sociology um or or literature or film and media um there's there's just um it kind of draws you out of your disciplinary bounds and also pushes you to both um, articulate the stakes of your own discipline in conversation with others and to learn about your own disciplinary limitations or um, just kind of like the edges of your discipline in a way that has been really useful to me. Um, and let me think more, I guess. Um, yeah, I've also, in addition to my coursework, um, been involved in, um, in the consortium and um, that's also been very useful to think about um, the, you know, the work that we do in the American academic system, but then also the kinds of critical theory that are being done in Latin America or the Middle East or um, South Asia or Africa. And, and 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 so on, um, and that that's also given me the chance, you know, whether through organizing talks um, or um, being, you know, active on the editorial board of Critical Times, encountering different kinds of um, material, just to see the kind of um, broad portability of critical theory, but also its malleability, how it um, is. Uh, understood maybe uh, differently in the context of, of Turkey versus how we are reading it here um, in, in the US. And, um, and yeah, and then one other thing I'll add is that I, um, it's also given me the opportunity um, to, I, I've led the theories of the Global South working group the last few years through the critical theory program. Um, so, that has been a chance to um, to expand with with students across the campus um, and and read texts that um, you know either reread texts that I've read in critical theory courses or um, read texts that I didn't get a chance to read and read them in a kind of informal setting with with my peers and and also. Um, we've been able to organize, or we did before the pandemic, organize a few events um, 
um, in which we were supported by the critical theory program and the Townsend Center to um, have speakers from different universities. So there's just a kind of, um, my experience has been that the program has offered me just kind of so many opportunities, um, whether in the form of um, meeting people or going to events or, um, I also re received a critical theory grant last summer. So I just, I am sort of immensely grateful to the program um, and yeah. If anyone has any questions, I would be happy to um, answer or respond in the future. Wonderful, thanks. Um, Josh. Hey, all right. So um, I've written down here and we'll I uh, read some hopefully helpful thoughts because even as we still struggle to adapt certain elements of the in-person experience to an online environment, it turns out that my discomfort with public speaking made a complete and speedy transition to this virtual medium. So, um, what visibly so? <laughs> um, all right. So first, <clears throat> doc student in the School of Social Welfare. I come to this program as someone situated in part as a social scientist and someone as a professional practitioner too. So despite whatever personal and intellectual commitments I have to theory and notwithstanding certain methodological investments of mine that might be better suited to the humanities, my departmental affiliation obligates me never to depart entirely from my responsibility to the work of social intervention. I bring this up for the benefit of any similarly located perspective designated emphasis students to say that as a social scientist and member of a Berkeley professional school, uh, the attendant tension with this program's obviously and oftentimes purely theoretical orientation has been actually an incredibly generative friction, certainly not an impasse or even a detriment. And second, I came to this program as a virtual newcomer to critical theory to its antecedents, to the Frankfurt School, to its modes and manifestations today. Not until my participation in this program did I undertake my first sustained engagements with Kant, Hegel, and Marx, Adorno, Horkheimer, Benjamin, Habermas, Ben Habib, or Angela Davis, who nicely brings things full circle back to a terrain with which I'm more familiar as a social worker. Point here is that my relationship to the program's contents as someone meeting these figures and these texts, usually for the first time, has proven productive in the same way as my perhaps non traditional disciplinary identification. I guess this is sort of my if it worked for me, it can work for anyone testimonial for those who might estimate the program to be daunting in its required curriculum. Uh, even as someone only just beginning a dialogue with critical theory, the coursework has been profoundly transformative for me, making the heavy intellectual lifting well worth it in the end. Uh, though I should not understate that none of this ought to suggest a very good fit for the newcomer aspiring to casually experiment with critical theory, as it has definitely demanded the utmost seriousness from me in order to reap the reward. And lastly, speaking more to the personal than the academic experience of the designated emphasis in critical theory, even coming as I am from a different position than most, I have found the students and faculty in this program to be absolutely wonderful. I experience them as offering encouragement and constant enthusiasm for interdisciplinary collaboration, making this space a collective of thought partners that is instrumental to critical thought in general and which is invaluable as a respite from the unthinking violence of what exists outside of criticality. My little spiel. I feel like it's almost super derogatory to add something to what's just been shown by both Donna and Josh now. Um, but I probably I probably should at the very least open open this up to others and mention a couple of things. Uh, just about the basic underlying structure <clears throat> that uh, that uh, both Josh and Donna um, mentioned. As you probably have all seen or all know, um, critical theory involves at its core as a curriculum, um, five, five courses uh, that one, one takes on the way to candidacy um, on, as part of one's coursework. Uh, courses which 
perhaps not in all, but in most cases, um, can be fairly seamlessly integrated, we hope, uh, with work that you're doing already. Um, three of those are, are categorical requirements of a sort. Um, a 200 course um, anchored in 19th century critical philosophy, uh, the sort of deep conceptual antecedents uh, to what we have come to call critical theory through Kant, Hegel, Marx, um, and, and others, as has been mentioned. Uh, the second 205 uh, that, that both Tony and Rob and, and also Karen uh, have mentioned moving into the early 20th century and the more, the more explicit um, organization uh, of critical theory around the Frankfurt School, but also in other, in other, other locations. And then the 240 that Colleen mentioned a moment ago, um, tracing that genealogy or history outward beyond, uh, beyond um, the early part of the 20th century into its second half and toward the contemporary moment. Um, in a way flexible enough, we hope, uh, to experiment with the sites in which, uh, which critical theory has a, a sort of gained traction or has spontaneously reinvented itself um, in different ways. And then a range of electives uh, from all of the sort of departments uh, otherwise represented. So one might well take a course in anthropology and gender and women's studies in, in, in rhetoric, in comparative literature, um, and have all of those count um, as critical theory courses uh, in ways that can be can be parceled uh, parceled together um, and and adapted uh, to best use. And then, of course, the other part of it comes once one has advanced to candidacy um, and is working on one's dissertation, at which your your dissertation committee um, will include a reader from the program from the very long list of affiliated faculty. Uh, who are part of part of our discussions, and and again, these are these are sort of minimal, minimal in a way, regulative requirements um, that provide a kind of menu, ideally, a sort of set of tools and resources uh, for different students to pick up and put together um, in in different ways. Um, Rob has has given as much thought to the sort of structure of the graduate program. Uh, as, as anyone. So I should probably invite him to say a word or two and then open it up to any questions that anyone might have. Sound. Thank you, Donna and Josh, especially, and Dan and Patty. Um, I think in a minute, if it feels okay to her, and I hope it doesn't feel like a pressure, and if so, it's fine to drop it, but um, it might be really valuable to hear uh, in addition, which it will be from Karen and Colleen and Tony, um, I especially want to um, just say that Leslie may have, along with me, a, a particularly almost funny kind of interesting take on what a critical theory program at Berkeley can offer. I, I'm not sure I'm exactly right about this, but I think I am. I think in our 60 approximately faculty and 100 approximately grad students, which on both counts us, both counts makes us um, in the Western hemisphere and we think possibly the world, the largest critical theory graduate program around. Donna Jones of the English department and Leslie and I, I think are the only members of our critical theory faculty um, who were both Berkeley PhDs a while ago, but such a while ago, um, I hope it's okay to say this, Leslie, that we were here before there was a critical theory program. And so for Leslie and for me and for Donna, but also for scores of our um, kind of dearest colleagues and comrades that we went to school with, we more or less invented, especially as a series of auditings after taking exams, what we suddenly realized, even though we were taking courses outside our own discipline uh, in other graduate programs. And so what that really meant was at a certain point, you thought I'm a literary scholar or I'm a sociologist or I do gender studies or I do political economy. And I really care about all the other fields I mentioned. And I'm suddenly aware that my interest in them is leading to me, me to make interestingly metaphorical claims about them. 
And if I'm an anthropologist trying to hit the pay dirt, so to speak, of some combination of gender studies and political economy, it's incredibly valuable not for me to only read that and take courses, but actually be with fellow grad students and faculty who in the most amiable and supportive, but also extraordinarily rigorous ways say, gee, that's a really interesting claim. I hear that you think it's a historical claim. It's actually a literary claim about history still. And that may be fine, but if you want it to have the ballast of an interdisciplinarity that takes the tools of other disciplines, here's what you would need to do. This kind of thing is done all the time in all kinds of interdisciplinary programs, at least as well and often better than we do it ourselves. One thing we've got is no perfect set of concepts or theories. In fact, we don't have a privileged set. People work on all kinds of different things. And when we work on the same things, we usually disagree productively with one another. But what we do is we have a group of concepts, histories, and theories that we don't all share, but enough of us share that where we can give each other feedback, it's both supportive, but also it's really a kind of helpful checking of one another. You haven't done this yet, and I, I might still not agree with the argument. I think you're reading Du Bois and his sociology, and you're reading the world in Africa, but you're still reading it as if it's one of his poems or novels. You're not seeing what's novel in the actual, first the sociology back from Philadelphia Negro when he started American sociology single-handedly. And secondly, you're not getting to this new leap in what it means to do international sociology. You're thinking about it in solidarity, but your solidarity is metaphorical. And you talk to someone in sociology, in international studies, in African-American history, and it's, it's really fantastic because it just opens your mind to what your mind isn't taking its own PhD in, so to speak. And it gives you the rigor of your own departmental training suddenly in dialogue with people outside it or even really outside it or some combination. And it, it's just really rare, not only to have that, but to have people who are in a large constellation where at least some of what we're each working on very likely touches on some else. Uh, just the last thing I'll say before turning over to Leslie and the, the other colleagues of mine who I think will have equally valuable things as we do to say, is that this is, just to retrace Dan's steps a little, in 2005 and 2006, this is what, if I'm remembering correctly, Tony was in there, but also the initiative seeing that for decades, their graduate students have been doing this on their own. Judy Butler and uh, Wendy Brown in political science and political theory, and um, a, a number of people in anthropology, sociology, in literary studies, in film studies, got together and read together a number of texts for about a year and said, what would be, not a perfect curriculum, there is so much, no such thing, what would be the way to start a graduate program that could open this up to the needs we think graduate students want and the ones they themselves will express. And that was sort of the genesis in 2006 at the very beginning of the DE in critical theory. Um, I think Leslie will have uh, really great things to add to that, Colleen, Tony, and Karen, uh, just for starters. But I, I think that set of um, constant inquiry that we're all interested in is what we would also like you to inquire to us about today or afterwards. So please feel free. Um, we can hardly even wish to, to be exhaustive today because we don't want to exhaust you. We're just glad to meet you and to have a basis to talking with you in the future. So with that, I'll just happily turn it over to Leslie. I don't think I have that much to add. I haven't ever taught any of the, the the sort of original required courses, the core courses in, in critical theory, and I probably wouldn't, it wouldn't be my strength. Um, but I, but teaching electives to critical theory students is really fun. I mean, it's just really amazing. I, I, I taught a course a couple of years ago where I think I had like 
I think there were 14 students from 11 disciplines. And it's, it's challenging. I mean, it's challenging as a teacher and it's challenging as for students, I think. People really have to articulate where they're coming from. There are sometimes sharp disagreements. Everybody's on thin ice, including the person teaching because there are lots of things your students know you don't know. Um, it's also really thrilling. I mean, it is really a space of learning that's a different kind of learning than being rooted in discipline where everybody sort of claims the same epistemological, you know, grounds and then works from there. So yeah, I think if you can figure out a way to fit this into your studies here, I just think it's, it's very exciting and it does help you turn around and look back at your own discipline in a much more, um, in a much richer way. So, but I think mostly we should hear from the folks who've taught really more in the core. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a great journey, so. Do you mind telling us what the course you taught was, out of curiosity? Um, it, was, it was a course on, I don't remember, I think at the time I just called it Gender and Capitalism. Now I, I'm thinking my next version will be Gender and, I mean, Capitalism and the Accumulation of Difference, but some version of thinking of, how capitalism emerges out of a kind of embedded set of, of other relations. I guess I should just say that as somebody who was trained in sociology of a kind of qualitative and theoretical version, and then um, has ended up teaching in gender studies, it's also just really, really fun for me to teach outside courses where gender has to be at the absolute center of what I do, although feminist theory is kind of always right in there. But, it's nice to, it's, I mean, I, I guess what I'm saying is I think for faculty as well as for students, it's exciting to, to have a chance to not just be disciplinarized, so. Um, I can, I mean, I teach, uh, I've taught both of the two out of three required courses. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I, everybody said all these great things and I agree with them. Uh, it is really a exciting thing to get to teach, you know, German idealism and uh, various other strands following. Of course, most people have some familiarity with Marx, but, um, and to get to teach them to a range of students from disciplines, including, I mean, there are people, even, there are even programs here I'd never heard of before, you know, the energy research group. Great. I actually, I think I do know who those people are, but, you know, we have uh, school of education people, public health people, obviously a lot of Dwinell people, but, um, but then uh, students from other programs. And I, I just think that's a wonderful opportunity. And I've said before, I'm envious. I'm actually envious of the students to have that um, kind of uh, opportunity to make connections across uh, classes and departments. Um, there is also a side to critical theory. I mean, it's all been mentioned, but um, I say another way, you know, one way to understand critical theory for, from a student perspective is you have to take some courses. But the thing is, for most students, this is not at all onerous because they're the courses you want to take anyway. And, you know, you have the, uh, the two required ones which mm, I think most people want to take anyway if they're into critical theory. And then another um, required one that varies more in topic and then a couple of electives. It's, it's I, I don't know, do people ever have trouble like doing the requirements? I mean, I, they sort of just happen because that's what you want to take. Um, usually, not, not in all cases, but in most cases, somebody in your own department um, may be the person that you're taking courses with to fulfill your department. Uh, electives, and then that can be counted also toward critical theory. So, so critical theory is, from a student perspective, I believe, a bunch of courses, and from everybody's perspective, it's a bunch of people. Um, and then it is also a, a, what would you call it, a commons for events, which also means money. You know, there's lots of money for um, having lectures and events and so forth. So. Critical theory has that side where it's a it's a clearinghouse for events and lectures and organizing or to support some other event you're organizing that's related to critical theory. So critical theory can chip in a little and be on the sponsor list, um, which thereby broadens again the number of people that are connected and related. So it's um it, it's a I mean the the language designated emphasis sounds it's very hard to understand <laughs> what that is, but you know, bunch of courses, group of people, 
and a clearinghouse for events and, and, and similar opportunities. Um, yeah, happy to answer questions. Uh, yeah, maybe we should get, go to questions. Just to have a, a quick, uh, <clears throat> for me, critical theory is kind of a common language that it doesn't matter where you're coming from, you know, what foreign language, et cetera, et cetera, you suddenly can uh, communicate with people in other departments and other fields, other disciplines, uh, because, you know, we all read, you know, then Foucault, basic Foucault and basic Benjamin, ben, basic ben, uh, Adorno, and that provides a kind of a common language that you have that you don't have, if you, particularly in a foreign language, which often tends to be provincial in other uh, universities. Not at Berkeley, you know, we have completely porous borders. And the reason why this is possible is because most of our students, or quite a number of our graduate students, take critical theories uh, uh, seminars in which they meet other graduate students. Uh, so they have basically an alternative department, an alternative reality, so to speak, that they can communicate with and feel like uh, they have something in common. I think that's really, really uh, important. I mean, comparative literature used to be this, uh, that you, you were in a foreign language and in comparative literature, but, but uh, and it's still valuable, nothing is comparative literature, but critical theory is, is even more encompassing in, in my opinion. And I think in, uh, Philip, if you remember, I think we had 15 people, I think there were people from 10 departments, right? And they were all, they didn't know it, most of them didn't know each other before. And, and now I hope you, you keep communicating with each other, at least you understand. Uh, and, and, and meet these people. I think that's really an important thing. So it's basically a means to transcend the old fashioned, particularly in, in European languages, the old fashioned nationalist uh, or national boundaries. You know, we have Scandinavian and, and uh, German and French and Italian and Spanish, et cetera, et cetera. So for, for strictly administrative reason, we cannot uh, do away with this, and, and I tried it, but it does not, it cannot be done. Uh, but so you be built a second rather than kind of work with, uh, you know, taking away stuff and, and, and endless, uh, endless discussion. But what we do instead is we just add it on. And for those people who are interested, they have this alternative uh, that transcends the, the national uh, uh, boundaries and, uh, and disciplinary boundaries. So in that sense, basically, I, I totally concur with what, what uh, Rob so eloquently put before. But I think we should open it up to, to general questions. Maybe there are some. Yeah, if anyone wants to ask a question, I think. Um, Just maybe always... before we do that, uh, if, uh, if Colleen is still there, uh, not in my gallery at the moment, I'm just gonna ask her if uh, she feels like it to maybe say a word. Okay, I, I won't take up any uh, much time, hopefully, uh, since we're at 640. Um, nothing to add, really. I mean, not, 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 not a great deal to add to what people have said um, in terms of any corrective views. I mean, it's really interesting to hear um, people's accounts of it. I, I think one thing that might be um, just, uh, that hasn't been said is that, um, um, it, it, Interesting, I mean, I'm old enough to have been trained at a time when theory meant French theory. Um, it, it, uh, so when I was in graduate school, Columbia, that's what it meant to be theoretical. And so coming to Berkeley as a faculty member and then with critical theory being established here, it's much more Germanic, uh, you know, uh, or more foundational, which is interesting because we, I always had that, I, I got a bit of that already get, having got, been to Columbia where through Said, who has this kind of like interest in Frankfurt school already had sort of been emphasizing that to some degree. When, so I don't know, what, why am I saying this? Um, I, actually, what I really wanna say is that I think that the interdisciplinarity for me coming out of a big department like in, in English, um, rather than a smaller department, the interdisciplinarity, and, and English is very interdisciplinary, I feel, especially towards history, um, you know, as a result of its particular formation um, from the 1980s onward, but that as an Americanist in particular, I feel that what critical theory offers is the way to be um, theoretical and Americanist at the same time in a way that is um, really beneficial. I mean, it's not, it, I think that's a little bit unusual. 
um, in terms of what Berkeley offers, in terms of articulating the critical theory part to the Americanism, um, as it were. Uh, often the interdisciplinarity coming out of English departments connects to an American studies program, which we also have here, um, and ethnic studies, which gives us a kind of more um, social, you know, socio gives us the sociological social science articulation, which we also have here. I think the benefit of critical theory here is that it's connecting all those hubs so that you can actually pivot from being an Americanist towards theory and towards history simultaneously and towards social science simultaneously, which I find very productive. So maybe I'll, I'll stop there. I think the Americans just won the Franco-Prussian War. <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks everyone. I don't know if we have blue hands, I, I can't see them. Um, but if anyone anyone wants to, if there are blue hands, oh, there's a yellow hand, um, David. Sure. Thank you, everyone. It's been great to hear this. And actually following Colleen, if I can, um, Colleen's sort of account, I'm kind of curious to what extent, I, I understand from what I'm hearing, it's not exactly the case, but I am kind of curious to what extent, let's say, how foundational this German foundation, or even just the fact that, you know, there, there are so many core courses in German idealism. Do you find that a lot of sort of the students in critical theory end up learning German as a result of sort of some of the, uh, um, sort of core classes. I, I, as a Yiddishist, I'm curious. It's not too much of a stretch, but it's, it is still a stretch and I'm curious. And the other, the other question I had is, I guess more and more in terms of, and I'm assuming now that, I, now that I think about this, that it's probably department specific, but just in terms of sort of the actual dissertation and qualifying exams, to what extent is there a very hands-on, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the program, a very hands-on role? Thank you. Uh, rather, I, rather to what extent are there sort of uh, pro program sort of from the program uh, requirements for those things, I guess? Yeah, I, taking the second first, um, I think this is part of the part of the sort of program's insinuation into and incorporation of uh, the the work that is that is done in so many other programs is that uh, the answer becomes that it, it varies quite a lot precisely because critical theory, is in the end not its own thing being being dropped into the middle uh, of your work in you know German or or whatever else, um, but is but is rather rather the kind of rather the kind of uh, movement back into it uh, that will best be proven um, by the work that is being done in German or in Italian or in anthropology or in or in or in history, um, so so the way that the way that critical theory gets used uh, in this dissertation or that one um, is probably probably as various as the students in the program. Um, you know, the School of Social Welfare and the School of Education and the Energy Resources Group um, versus various social science programs and various humanities programs all turn that over differently. Um, and that's where, where the variety of interests of the students um, is probably buttressed and supported by the variety of interests of the faculty, uh, right? So that the real representation is, is that of, of a reader who is, who is both adjoined to your dissertation and um, affiliated with, with critical theory. And the two of you together are, you know, could be more than one. Uh, can really think through that as 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 you go. As as for the first, um, having having taught some versions of two hundred and two hundred five, um, <clears throat> for me, of course, it's a it's a great uh, scandal and profligacy to get outside of the English and be able to teach something that I probably wouldn't otherwise able able to teach. And I I can't I can't claim to um, <clears throat> to necessarily uh, be be um, you know, simply holding forth in an utterly dogmatic or doctrinal fashion on, on Kant or, or Hegel. Um, but I think the, the work of those courses um, is, is in the way that's probably true of every seminar done right. Uh, at, one level, at one level, a mere down payment on a kind of continuing reading. 
I mean, there's no way that one can even make it through the phenomenology of spirit or the first critique or, or what have you. What you can do in such a seminar is begin to sink into it and begin to see um, that, that which is retrospectively discovered as foundational to use the wrong word, but is kind of conditional uh, to so much of, of what we discover after coming out of a French tradition, the German tradition, or any number um, of traditions. And I think the other, the other thing, the other kind of practical work uh, that 200, 205 especially um, do is, it, it is often, I think, the case as a grad student uh, that the, one of the first things you learn, of course, is to kind of kind of always have read whatever you're talking about, uh, you know, sort of scavenge a little here and there and sort of form an idea of this or that. And, and one learns expertly to borrow uh, from, from other accounts. Um, so much of what we do in all of our disciplines turns out to presuppose uh, a kind of work that is happening in something like the first critique or the phenomenology or whatever, wherever, whether we have been able to go back and sink into those texts or not. Um, and there is nothing more useful, I think, uh, than to have the chance to really sit down and read things that you might scavenge or scan or, scan or skim or what have you. Um, but to do so more deliberately and to do so without necessarily the sort of professionalizing claim um, of, of the single discipline seminar, but to do so in the company of a lot of people who are doing the same thing at the same time. Uh, and to go back and sort of collectively uh, discover, discover what is there in order then to bring it back uh, to the sort of subsequent thinking that one is doing. That, that at least is, is and, and I think uh, Karen and Leslie were both saying this in a way. Uh, it, it's a wonderful thrill from the side of teaching this as well. Uh, because it's like, oh, now I have to go back and really think about the first critique or, or what have you. To risk a mercenary note that's also about um, having a life, meaning a living. Um, our graduates are doing phenomenally well at getting jobs. Uh, Berkeley graduates in the humanities and social sciences is what I'm speaking of, but also those social science and humanities students who are also in the DE. And there's many reasons, uh, the, the sort of, um, uh, the ones, we deep down really feel is, well, that's because you're all so brilliant, of course. But secondly, there, there's something else which is about, um, to really use the word, the market in academia today. And that's, among other things, it's increasingly the case that departments and programs, whatever one is hired in or both, really like to have someone who can teach not only within that department or program various things, but teach in ways that seem to be at least partly interdisciplinary. And because one of the major things the critical theory program is doing is working with students who all have a home department and we're depending rightly on all of you to be getting the expertise there. And it's usually about engaging various aspects of social reality, trying to understand it better and perhaps depending on your point of view to understand the tools to with to change it. What critical theory adds to that that is also extraordinarily helpful and helpful in the sense that makes a, a candidate who wants to get a job in the academy teaching somewhere an attractive candidate is there's an ongoing few years long intense interchange about the conditions of knowledge that make knowing and being able to interact energetically with commitment, with engagement, whatever the terminology one might choose to use more effectively. So there's a double focus of the social materials themselves. And that as a number of us have said already, there's a question on the conditions of knowledge. 
what's required for different kinds of knowledge, but very specifically about the kinds of knowledge you want in your own studies within your department and within the own areas you yourself have chosen to do your research on. And the, the combination or constellation of them all is very intense in the most exciting, productive and rigorous ways we think in the program. And uh, to just put it mildly, that's noticed outside our university when you're finishing and leaving and looking to have a job yourself. Um, and and the, the doubleness or tripleness of what you're doing in your home department and in our program and the multiplicity within our program, we've really only seen it redound to the benefits after graduation. Um, so that, that's, the, um, that's the mercantile mercenary uh, pragmatic, but we also have a kind of social justice reason that I don't even need to fill in that you obviously get as well. It so back to idealist heights. Uh, Freya has a question, I think. Great. Thank you so much for the introduction to the program. Uh, speaking about uh, doubleness and tripleness, I have a question about doing double DEs. Uh, so does the program allow a course to be double counted towards the requirements of both DEs if one is doing two? And are there any complications that one should be aware of, um, uh, especially regarding the process of taking the QE and, the, and writing the dissertation later on? In in general, a, a, number of, a number of our students have done double DEs in several directions, Noma Media, um, Jewish Studies, and a number of, a number of, um, a number of others. So there is, there, is no, there is no barrier to it. Um, in general, most of our courses, uh, this is for technical reasons, which will dull the mind to go through. Um, most of our courses are housed within their home original uh, departments. And so they automatically count as what they are. And then we also count them as critical, critical theory courses. And in general, um, every program uh, has, establishes its own expectations and requirements um, and, and catalogs that. So there is, there is no reason in general why a course that might otherwise count for three or four different things can't answer uh, to to each of each of those, those purposes, and and largely has done in the past. I think a number of a number of uh, of the faculty here have, uh, for better or worse, done tours as department chairs and graduate advisors and all the rest. And I think what we all learn um, in these jobs uh, is that the way the way to manage Berkeley um, is to get creative and solve every question as it comes up using whatever, whatever kind of improvisational uh, technique one can find. Uh, and I think that generally informs, informs both the attitude and the practice um, in our case. One other question that I think Freya had also asked was about um, qualifying exams and dissertation requirements. And the basis on that is that to get the DE, besides the five core courses, uh, rather the five courses, three core and two elective, you need, and it's almost, in fact, it's never a problem. You need at least one faculty member on your qualifying exams who's a member of the DE faculty and the same for the dissertation. And that's just, uh, as far as we know, never been a problem for anybody who's actually in the program because they're taking courses from people they're interested in. And there's frequently someone in their home department. And it's often the case that one faculty member is wearing two hats at once. That is someone within their department and also the DE at the same time. It doesn't have to be a separate person. Any other general questions or? last thoughts or? If they do come up later, please don't hesitate to contact any of us. Uh, it, it's really not a problem and it's what we're around for. 
I would just add, I guess, to Rob's point that um, it does seem like in the last few years, the critical theory program is also expanding um, the faculty representation of, of the departments that it represents. So, um, so yeah, I would think that there, um, in, in many cases that there are faculty um, that also represent the departments, the diversity of departments that you all um, come from so that you don't necessarily, it doesn't have to seem like it's an outside person all the time. That's right. I mean, probably inevitably from its founding um, program really, really took root somewhere near the boundary between the Division of Arts and Humanities and the Division of Social Sciences. Um, and it is, it is probably inevitable that, you know, a large department concentrated in particular ways like English or anthropology or, or comparative literature um, might have more affiliated faculty, but we do try to be sure uh, that, um, <clears throat> that, um, that the, the program itself uh, is, is, is matching uh, that, uh, that breadth and variety, um, and also, you know, in a practical way, because every, every program has a different curriculum, a different economy of required courses and electives and all the rest. And so we do try to be aware um, of things we might do to relieve bottlenecks uh, that might be presented with either courses or faculty, faculty representation, imperfectly in that kind of Berkeley way, but it, it, is, it is on the mind. Again, please don't hesitate to get hold of us. And uh, it's over said, but needs to keep being said. Uh, please take care and be safe as possible in the meantime. Hmm. Well, I'll just wrap up then by uh, letting me on the point of point of personal privilege. Uh, thank, thank, especially Donna and Josh. Uh, thank all of you. Um, thank, thank uh, all of our affiliates uh, who have who have lent their greater wisdom uh, to all of this. And and to repeat what Rob says, uh, it's part of the condition of being in a pandemic. No one is going anywhere. Uh, so if questions if questions arise uh, or or just thoughts about about any of it or things that uh, can be illuminated along the way, uh, please don't hesitate to drop me a note. Uh, drop Rob a note. Um, uh, Patty is still keeping things going, and we'd all we'd all be delighted uh, to sort of continue the conversation for now in a provisional way, um, but with the idea ultimately of uh, of extending that uh, into the next year and beyond as the world we hope um, begins to return. And right on right on the hour then. Um, thanks to everyone. Thanks everyone. Take care. Thank you.